So your next of kin or whoever is your emergency contact, you will have a corporate version of. When you're in trouble, the chance of you phoning your office before your next of kin is unlikely because the, fir the fir first number that you'll remember will be that person, so your mum or your husband or wife or whoever. So that number is stuck in your head. It's going to be the first one. You're not going to remember the travel team's telephone number and your phone's gone in your handbag. So the, what information you give corporately, you would need to decide internally. But if you have a work phone that you're taking with you, which I would suggest you all do, the passwords on that your office will have anyway. So it's, un it's giving them the ability to unlock everything that you owned before. Bank details, absolutely not, unless you have a, bank, a work bank card, which, again, most of you will have. It's getting all of those things replaced as quickly as possible so that you can either continue with your trip or you can get, get out. So it's not, it is confusing. The password, that's a personal thing. And if your other half doesn't have your password anyway, you probably shouldn't be doing whatever you're doing on that device. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, w I would balance that out corporately and work out what is what is for the corporate and what is for person. Not. So what you do is the moment you you get it and you've got into your room, you call whoever has all of that data and give it to them because it is it's your safe it's your safe zone because they will always be able to find you there if you've gone off reservation. And if you're not there, somebody else can access. So it means that if your passport is in the safe, if you can actually call the hotel as the travel manager and say, listen, could you go and check their room? They haven't checked in for three days, which no. you may find somebody in the room or not. Um, but it gives you a first, first point.